So we're going to work on a, a double handled willow platter today. So I just want to quick kind of show you the materials I need. I got a warm a bucket with warm water for uh, soaking my reed. I have a, a shears or basketry shears. I don't wear mine are right now at all in case I need it. And the other thing that I need is a weave right tool. So that's kind of my modus operandi for um, weaving. And then it's always good to have a, a spray bottle so that you can uh, wet something easily and with warm water. So anyways, that's kind of the tools that you need for this. And then I want to uh, just kind of show you what my palette is going to be. I decided to go with some more springier colors instead of fall colors since that's where we're at. So I kind of just throw these together and look at them. Doesn't mean I'll use all of them. But I just kind of put them together and then see what I come up with. So um, these are going to be our ribs. And I think I'm going to try this. This is a little bit thicker, but I think that's going to be my main stake in the center. And then this is my frame. You can see that it's two handles. And they are, uh, they've been sliped and then zip tied together. If you decide that you want one of these kits, what I'll do since they get too big basically to go in my box. I'll take these apart and uh, send you some zip ties with it so that you can put them back together again. So anyways, so that's where we're going to start. Okay, so I got my frame and I've got my center rib. So at this point what I'm trying to do I'm going to measure this out. So, and, and with this platter, I'm thinking I'm going to make it a little bit more dippy than just a flat one. How's that? So, um, I'm going to cut this so it's a little bit long. I know it's hard to see this whole thing. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out. Actually, I'm going to start out <clears throat> by just doing a weave. And basically, all you're doing is a figure eight here. I'm going to get rid of this guy for a second, just to kind of get the weave going. So I'm going over one side of the frame and over the other side of the frame. And I decided to start with some green. And all I'm going to do is just kind of go back and forth here. For about oh, six rows. Now. This won't be as critical. Um, no, but it will later, so I'm going to show you this. I don't want this to be gappy looking like that. So there's like gaps in between the wraps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around like I normally would, like headed to the other side, and then I'm going to come back around it one more time. And that extra loop strengthens it strengthens a weave so it doesn't get gappy on you and also covers those gaps on the sides. So I'm going to do that for a little bit here. <clears throat> I want that to be tight. So that's normally how I'd go. I'm going to go around one more time. And that really gives me enough weave, I think, to go ahead and um, put this guy in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a slipe. This is a nice, long, tapered cut. Nice, long, tapered cut. Not a blunt one because they won't go in. And if they do go in, they're not going to stay. And it doesn't matter which side you put it on, put it on one or the other. And we can kind of shift this guy around, so even though he's on one side, we can move him over. So then as I do my weave, I'm going to incorporate him in here. And anytime you start with adding ribs, it's a little persnickety, like this one's going to be. But once you get about three rows in, start going your way. And to get this in, if you can't do a double wrap, then don't do it. Do it the next time. It's all good. Enough. So 
So now, because it's kind of in there, I can do that double wrap again. You're always trying to make your weave even across, so that's another good reason to do a double wrap. Okay. So I want this to look like a leaf. So what I'm going to do is, as I get going here, I'm going to branch off from that main beam with my smaller ribs in a, a kind of a leaf pattern. Makes sense. It's supposed to be a leaf, right? So I'm going to continue on with this a little bit, and then I'm going to start adding those side stakes or leaflets or whatever you'd like to call them. I'm going to call them side stakes. Okay. All right, so that's where I got so far, and now I'm going to put my little side guys in. And especially when you're first starting out here, they're not that long. So a little bit goes a long way. So once again, I want to put a slip on them. I want to put a point on them so they go in nice. And I'm going to start them from the main beam, this guy here, and bring them out. So it's a little bit tight. You take your awl, open it up. one in there and then we're going to fan this out to the side so just give it an approximate however long you want to go each each structure is different because nature never does anything the same thing twice then I'm going to do the same thing over on this side now one thing I'll tell you is when you put your rib in if you put it in with a cut or sliped edge next to the existing rib they go in there nicer why I don't know. It's one of those mysteries. Save this for later. You'll need it. Okay, so then we've just got more over and unders in the same pathway. And you can use number two for this. You just have a finer weave or number three, which is what I'm using. Either one works fine. Number, if you do number two, or like I said, it's a finer weave. It just make, means that you're going to weave more longer. So once again, I'm going to come around that. And those are my first set of little leaflet guys. So I'm going to do about four or five rows of this. And then I like to change... Right before I'm going to change a color, I'll, I'll do like one or two rows of black. I just think it it, it uh, defines the line in it, and I like that better. So, anyways, I'll do this for a little bit, and then I'll show you how we add on and how I progress. How's that? Added on my next set of ribs, and um, so you can see I did like. Uh, two, four, six, eight, ten, maybe rows before I started these next ones over. And so what I want to show you is <clears throat> when I've got these real close and this weaver is starting to get a little bit dry, so I'm going to take my spritzer to make sure it's good and wet. So that would be kind of tight for me to separate at this point, so I'm going to treat them like I didn't put them in for a couple of rows. And then on the third row, I will separate them and that way the tips are already anchored and it goes a little easier so this is my third row and then I'll split them helps to use a weave right to get it down there tight okay and there you go so I'm at the point now where I'm gonna change my color and so I am gonna um, I'm gonna use some black in between these and uh, just gonna get this wet quick since I don't have it ready and just do one row of black to separate it and so this is how I do this to start another piece because you're gonna be doing a lot of pieces so 
you pull back the dog tail and stick in the thermometer. You'll never forget it. Okay, and then I'm just going to go for two rows. You could do, I mean, you could do two or three. Whatever you want to do. But I'm going to do two rows. And then I'm going to change the colors. I don't want a whole bunch of um, start and stops in the same place. So, let's see how this works out. I'll do that anyways. So, and all these little tails, I'll trim them up later. 